Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Brian Boyle from Brian Boyle Music and the Producers Forum, back again with the second installment to my Pro Tools 8 LE Quick Start Guide. So, before we get started, let's do a quick review. Uh, in the first video, we went over plugging in, how to make a new session, how to add some tracks, switch windows, setting the tempo and click track, and finally doing some recording. In this session, we'll be talking about overdubbing, how to use some plugins, using virtual instruments or MIDI, using sends, making a little bit of a mix, bouncing to disc, and burning a CD. So, let's get started. I've got a new session set up here. Um, got some drums in it. Why don't we go ahead and just listen to them real fast? Listen to a full bar. And here we go. So there you go, we just got some drums and we're going to add a new track. It's going to be a mono audio track. I'm going to switch to my mix window. Make sure that my input is set to input 2 where I have my piano plugged in. Double click down here, I'm going to name it piano. Switch back to my uh, edit window. Prime to record. Time to record, and I'm just going to play a little piano. Here we go. And there you go, I got some piano in here now. Okay, so now that we've overdubbed some piano over the drums, what we're going to do next is learn how to use a plugin. Okay, so now that we've got our piano recorded, I'm going to add a plugin to our piano track. The way we do that is we're going to switch to the mix window, command equals, go up here to our inserts, I'm going to click. Go down to Plugin, over to EQ, and I'm going to add an EQ37 band. I'm going to pull out some of the lows. I know around 500 kilohertz it usually causes some problems, so I'm going to pull the gain down and tighten that up. And then I'm just going to add a little bit of presence here, and that should make our piano sound a little bit nicer. So, why don't we go ahead and listen to that back. And there we go, it sounds a lot nicer now. Okay, so now that we've added some EQ, uh, it's sounding pretty good now, sounding like we got some music, but we're still missing something, and I feel like we're missing some bass. So uh, we're going to go up to Track, New, we're going to create a stereo instrument track. This is how you create a virtual instrument or MIDI in Pro Tools. Okay, so. I want to make this a bass sound, so I'm going to name it bass. I'm going to switch back to my mix window. Go up here to my inserts. Make sure you're selecting a multi-channel plugin because it's a stereo track. Go on down to instrument and we're going to select expand. That's the default virtual instrument that comes with Pro Tools 8. Okay, this pulls up our expand dialog box. Go on up here to factory default. This is where you change the sound. 
Got all kinds of different things, soft pads, percussive, ar ar arpeggios, vocals, strings. But for now, we're just going to stick to a regular old bass sound. So why don't we go and select, uh, let's see here. How about acoustic fretless? That sounds good. All right, so I'm going to prime to record here. Make sure that you, if you have a MIDI controller, uh, you'll see that they're, you know, they sell them for $99 at uh, Sam Ash or musiciansfriend.com. Um, you can get a MIDI controller. That's the kind of thing you'll need to play a virtual instrument. So cheap and uh, effective because you can get some great sounds out of these virtual instruments. So I'm going to go here, back to the bass, make sure it's primed to record. I'm going to prime to record up here. Make sure that my MIDI controller is all ready to go, and I'm going to record some bass. So here we go. And there we go. We got some bass in here now. Okay, so we finally got some music here. We got some drums, some piano, some bass, pretty full sound. But we're still missing something. So the chances are you probably want to add some reverb, maybe some delay, or some interesting effects. Um, and we could put that directly on the track itself. Uh, we could go up to the piano track and we could put some plugins on it. We could go to reverb uh, and add some reverb here. But a better way to do that is to actually create an auxiliary track and some sends. So why don't we go ahead and go up to Track, New. You're going to create a stereo aux input. Hit Create. Now we're going to make this for some reverb. So I'm going to change the name to Verb. So an aux input is just a way to receive something from inside of Pro Tools, and we're going to receive it on a bus. So go up to your stereo auxiliary tracks input, which is your input here, and you're going to set it to bus 1, 2, stereo. The next thing that you'll do is go to p your piano track, go to your sends, and you're going to make sure that you're sending the signal from your piano to bus 1, 2. You'll see here the volume is all the way down, so you're actually not sending anything until you turn the volume up. So we'll turn it up to, let's turn it to about negative 5. Don't want it to be too loud. And finally, we're going to go to our stereo aux input, up to our inserts, and we're going to add a reverb plugin. We'll just do the default one that comes with Pro Tools, D-verb, and let's just leave it how it is. So, if I solo these two tracks, you will actually hear uh, not just the piano, but the piano with some reverb. So let's go ahead and take a listen. So you can hear the reverb there, adds a little bit of an ambient quality to the piano, makes it sound kind of far away or like you're playing in a big room. Um, the nice part about separating the stereo auxiliary input and the piano track itself and adding the reverb on the stereo aux is that you can control um, the two sounds separately and blend them a lot better. Okay, so everything is sounding pretty good so far. But um, we probably got a little bit of a hiss here in the beginning. Uh, anytime you're recording an instrument and there's some silence, you'll hear a little hiss. So I'm going to select the crop tool and I'm going to zoom in here. And I'm just going to slide this region over. Um, the nice thing about using the crop tool is it doesn't permanently delete anything. You can always unroll it to get that audio back. But we're just going to crop it a little bit here at the start and the beginning. Make sure that it's uh, nice and tight. We don't have any unnecessary dead air. And 
Um, one final thing that we'll do too is we'll actually automate the volume on the master fader so that our track fades out. And the way we'll do that is by selecting the grabber tool. This here is our volume, this black line on the master fader. So we're just going to click here in this final bar and we're going to have a one bar fade out. You click here and you just drag it down. So we'll go ahead and we'll actually listen to our fade out. Here we go. Pretty quick, but it's a fade out. So there we go. So now we're ready to bounce to disk. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to actually select the amount of audio that we want to bounce. If you go to File, Bounce to Disk, it's going to bounce everything. It'll bounce everything from the very first audio to the very last audio. So it would bounce this whole thing, which is like 5 minutes and 30 seconds, which we don't want all of that. We just want this little section here. So the way that we're going to select that is we're going to click on the Selection tool. We're going to zoom in a little bit here. And the shortcut for zooming in, by the way, is um, Command Bracket, which is like right under the plus equal sign. And zoom out is Command Bracket the other way, which is right under the dash or next to the P. Um, so I'm going to zoom in here. I'm going to take my Selection tool, and I'm just going to highlight what I want to bounce down. Make sure we get that fade out in there start of the piano all the way to the fade out and we're going to go up to file bounce to disk make sure that your bounce source is uh, you, know, you want a stereo file make sure it's wave uh, stereo interleaved bit depth is 16 that's the default on most CDs sample rate 44.1 K and uh, convert after bounce so you go ahead and hit bounce and then it's going to prompt you for where you want to save it we'll just save it to the desktop we'll call it awesome music <laughs> and while it's bouncing down you get to listen to it back So, we're going to go ahead and hide Pro Tools, and we'll see we got some WAV files here. Here's the one that we saved called Awesome Music, and we can go ahead and drop that into iTunes. Here you'll see it. Let's add a new playlist. And then you go up to File. Burn playlist to disk, and it's going to ask you to put in a blank CD, and there you go. That's how you get your songs off of Pro Tools and onto a CD. So this concludes our second video. If you found this video helpful, please subscribe to Boyle Music 88, my YouTube channel. Uh, check out my website, brianboylemusic.wordpress.com, and uh, follow me on Twitter, at brianboylemusic. Alright guys, that's it for this video. Stay tuned for the next one, and uh, I'll see you soon.